how's everybody doing? Good to see you today, wherever you are. My name is Brother James Graham. I'm with the Academy of Divine Poetry and Urban Expression. And today we have a very special guest, none other than the poet extraordinaire, my brother, Stacy Williams. What's up, Stace? Good to see you, brother. Good to see you, man. You're doing some great things in the community with your poetry. Um, we always love to have you at the Trenton Divine Poetry Night Out. You're one of the divine poets, <laughs> the original divine <laughs> poets. He was uh, one of the first um, uh, divine poets to sign up. Uh, so I'll never forget Brother Stacy Williams coming through and saying, man, I want to be on. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I yeah. love it. Yeah, I love so it. how you been, bro? I'm blessed, bro. I'm good, blessed. Good. Good. Um, you got a couple pieces for us today. We're going to get into one of them. So right. um, just uh, give the people a piece of your um, skills. Writing is my therapy, everybody. Whatever I go through, I write. I heard this pastor say, God want to answer everybody's prayers, but when you hold stuff in, it block your blessing. So um, my father's my best friend. When he died, it hurt so much. I wish I ain't have a father. I ain't mean that, but that's just how much pain I was going through. So I wrote this piece to help me deal with the pain. It's called, One of the Best Days of My Life was the day my father died. Except for childbirth, when my children cried, one of the best days of my life was the day my father died. Even though with my hands, my tears I tried to hide, inside this day, I saw the hands of God. When we got to the hospital, you could see how his body is shredded. Look the x-ray, you could see how the cancer spread it. Doctor looked at me, it just didn't look right. He said that he doubted it if he'd make it through midnight. Everybody looked at me to see what I was willing. If I kept my life support, I'd be selfish. But if I took him off, I would kill him. My mother was quiet. She never said a thing. But when she opened her hands, there was two wedding rings. They never legally married, but both for tonight they planned it. I was asking God for help, but at the same time thinking, damn it. I just wanted to put him inside the ground so his death could begin. My mother said that just wasn't your father, that was my best friend. My older brother took over, started to speak on it. He said, everybody has to go home and rest. We all need to sleep on it. Being I work at the hospital, I was able to get the blood work. This is when I saw Jesus Christ's love work. I'm from Newark. My city's not that small. To get the mass certificate, we had to go to City Hall. My father's in his 50s. His death had come early. This was New Year's Eve. A lot of workers went home early. But to help us out, a lot of people that was willing. But everybody mm -hmm. agreed there wasn't one judge inside the building. Why this was happening, I couldn't put my hands on it. That was because Jesus had his hands on it. One of the superiors heard the tears that drip. He said, never in his life has there a story like this. This is when I continued to learn what Jesus' love is about. He sent my brother with a state trooper to the judge's house. As my savior went to work, the judge filled out the paperwork. I was in a lot of pain, but his pain didn't hurt. When we got back to the hospital, they gave us a private room. They shaved his face, even nurses put on perfume. But still, for some reason, I still couldn't cry. I said, Dad, you said Jesus. He said, Stacy, why shouldn't I? This is a lesson that was taught. This heaven and hell fought just for one hour. Death was put on life support. As time shows for the heavens, prayer became a weapon. When I looked around, out of nowhere, it came a reverend. They saved each other vows, to each other sung a song. They punched each other rings. Just like that, he was gone. Death became the honeymoon. I saw a smile inside the sky. One of the best days of my life was the day my father died. Wow. <laughs> Wow, that's deep. Bro. That's <laughs> that happened, deep. brother. Yeah. All that happened. I remember you rocking the uh, <laughs> Trent Devon Poetry Night Out with that one, man. Yeah. And uh, one of the uh, favorites was um, what is it called? Uh, Bring back the Ku Klux Klan. You got a <laughs> standing ovation, you, and you said, "Man, I don't know if I really want to do this." <laughs> you remember that? All these people. He was like. <laughs> I don't know if I really <laughs> want to do this here. We was like, go for it, man. Do it. Do it. He was like, oh. And then I saw the, I saw the look on your face when you went up to his eye. You did a, a disclaimer. He was like, hold on now, y'all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was, and then you, when they gave you a stand ovation, you was like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> it was shocking. You funny. I ain't even look at nobody. That's so I gotta get out of here, boy. You didn't know when they was coming at you. Give you a standing over there. You heard nope. the cheers. I didn't see nothing, y'all. Oh man, yeah, man, that was a good, good poem, bro. That was 
blazing. <laughs> but uh, so tell me about you. You you got raised up in North. And um, I'm from North. Grew up in one of the worst parts of anybody, but comic books and Star Wars and stuff took my mind from that. I live right next door to a big drug dealer. Next door, I live by his prostitute. I got cool with everybody. It's it's funny like how the stuff was back then. As bad as it was, the drug dealers had respect. You're not coming around here with that. Why not in school? Even the fiends knew what time to come out. So it was crazy as it sounds. Was respectable, and sometimes that respect allowed us to love them and love each other. So mm -hmm. I tell people, I never knew I was poor. I just really enjoyed it. Yeah, some of the uh, the the great talent that comes through Trenton is amazing. You know, that's like I said, I met uh, Stacy uh, Giovanni, uh, Trey G. Hmm. These guys are all like transplants from different <laughs> places around the world and I mean uh I mean it's amazing how much talent and poetry talent that comes together in Trenton and uh it's 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 uplifting thing when they sh express their talent Trenton like the Mecca <laughs> Well, I think well, I do a lot of uh traveling in the north for my um for my uh poetry uh talent search mm -hmm. <laughs> but I mean it's like Newark has always been my mecca um, in New York when mm -hmm. you get to go to New York it's in like you know that's another mm -hmm. level like people from and you see a lot of people from Newark in New York mm -hmm. and 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 uh, when I first started, I was going to Camden and then you go from Camden to Philly, Philly so yeah too. Philly's got some good stuff too mm -hmm. um, but you know like New Jersey is always holding it down wherever mm -hmm. you go you know and uh, like I, Nork was always like, wow! I always hear the, that uh, that new mm -hmm. conscious uh, <laughs> poetry that be like opening up your whole brain cells. But um, so I know you came from good stock <laughs> from Nork, man. You know what I mean? And when yeah. you told me that, I was like, well, that just figures it. <laughs> he from Nork, so I know he's going <laughs> he to bring it. You know? <laughs> so so um, during these times, like during this COVID time, you know. You were telling me that, you know, you, you got like a testimony and stuff for for people, you know, just you know, give them some encouraging words and, you know, give your testimony as best as possible. All right. One thing I learned, you know, it's crazy as sound. Some of the worst things that happen to you is the best things that happen to you. You can look at how bad it is and it's, it's understandable. Can't nobody tell you how you're supposed to react to death and sickness. It hurts. But I had to learn why you're going through it. You got to go through some scars. And it's been a part of my life where I lost everything. And, you know, I went down to Florida to this rehab. I'm just like, I'm thinking rehab is just straight jackets and people walking around with the IV and the wheelchair. <laughs> I was wrong. This is one of the best places I went to in my life, everybody. And, I mean, it was just constant positivity. It's what you choose and what you're going to do with it. Mm -hmm. You get something good or what you're going to do with it. You know, and so many things I've seen where it was like, no matter how bad something is, how do you going to react to it determines the answer of what it is. And it was just so many things I could go on and on. There'd be a whole nother podcast, but I'm just learning now. Let me just sit back. It hurt. I messed up. But I come up with little corny things. I say every great quarterback throws an interception. Every great boxer loses a fight. But it's how they deal with it. It's how they come back and win either that championship or that fight that night. All the system out there. You said um, one of the highlights of um, you wrote a book, and one of the highlights <laughs> of the book was uh, having uh, Lenny Green from WDLS in New York know the book like it was his own book. Give me some. Uh, um, my brother, what made me put the I put the book out to shut my brother up. He said, "I'm not coming no more open mics. I'm not coming to support you." He said, your favorite writer was in jail. He went on to all the people. I love Donald Coyne, child. I love Donald Coyne. And when I hung up the phone, I was like, whoa. But I wrote the book to show him, to shut him up. And when I put it out, it was scary. You know, when I was on WBLS in New York, Lenny Green knew the book better than me. I was like, whoa. And I would go to certain places and people fell in love with the cover. And nobody could understand my idea. It's called Sneakers on the Cross. Or every, automatically, so many people thought I was disrespecting God. I'm like, no. But this one guy was like, what you want? I said, I need graffiti. I need broken windows. I need the one-way sign. Mm. And I need the projects. 
he was like, I said, that's what I want. And he said, okay, give me two days. He hit me back that day. If you ever get a chance, check out the cover of the book, Sneakers on the Cross. He did an incredible job. And I done sold books just because of the cover alone. And when I was on WBLS in New York, it was just something how Lenny Green read the book. He knew the book better than me, and I wrote it. <laughs> and it's just something how different people just getting certain stuff out of it. That's something I enjoy. But sometimes you'd be surprised what's for you. It's more for other people than it is for you. Mm. And I really enjoy seeing other people getting things out of stuff I wrote that wasn't what I intended. They got something different. So I'm like, it's a blessing. <laughs> wow. Once again, uh, Mr. Stacy Williams, man. Appreciate all the good work you're doing, man. Well, appreciate me, uh, uh, <laughs> We down here at our paradise. We love so much uh, classic books and gifts on um, Front Street in downtown Trenton, New Jersey, man. This is where we have our open mics. We just, uh, we celebrate each other. We uh, do our thing. So I think the, um, what's our next one? I forget the next one we're having, but we'll come it's back. every first that. Saturday. Right? Every first Saturday. So that's what, what September well, we'll figure it out. We'll come back with that information. It'll be at the end of this video. So, um, well, brother, you got another poem for us to close us um, out? Yeah, I do this. I wanted to let everybody know there's no one way to write. And I do something for myself. I had to learn how to move out the way. I was at this event where um, it was like a class where they're real big on no pre-apologizing and then no one way to write. Just write. Mm -hmm. So, they give you three things you got to write. I had to rob a bank. I had to kill somebody and talk about what I got out of. Mm. I was like, whoa, so here we go, y'all. These are the prompts that I got. Um, I wanted to go pick my boy up to go rob this bank. And as usual, he always late, but I don't care because I got a crush on his sister. Her name is Promise. She's so pretty, I always promise myself. One day, I'm going to promise myself I'm going to marry her. So while he upstairs getting dressed, me and her talking, I'm like, man, I love this girl. He came downstairs like, man, you ready? I'm like, okay, we ready. Got inside the car, meet up my other boy. He blasting big inside the car. We blasting, killing it. They said, Stace, did you get the mask? I said, yeah. They said, what did you get? I said, they didn't have no Jason. with no Freddy Krueger. They was like, what you got? I said, all they had was Casper Friendly Ghost. They said, man, we can't rob a bank with Casper Friendly Ghost. I'm like, that's the only mask we got. So my boy said, look, this is what we'll do. I'm going to write a note. I'm going to send it to him. Once she read the note, we won't have to shoot nobody. We still going to bring our guns, but we won't have to do that. I was like, bet. We got to the bank. His handwriting is so bad, she couldn't even understand it. She was like, what is this? We panicked. We pulled out the guns. People screaming and everything. We're like, give us the money. Give us the money. The people came back with three big bags of money. I mean, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars in there. So we run into the car. Everybody excited. But when I was running, somebody grabbed me out of reflex. Boom, I shot him. They're like, man, come on, come on. I'm like, I can't believe I shot somebody. I messed up. So when we get inside the car. You hear the fire engines, the ambulance, the cop cars. You're like, man, calm down, calm down. Look all this money we got. We got away with over half a million dollars. But y'all, I'm messed up. I killed somebody. So we get to my boy's house. He turned on the TV and the news, we're on the news. It said, here we are in Newark, New Jersey, where a bank got robbed. The um, robbers got away with over half a million dollars. It was only one cash. A young lady came in here to cash her income tax check for cash for a car she was saving for. Her name was Promise. I killed my boy's sister. I didn't even know her. And we all looked at each other and we said, because she didn't have another day, we don't deserve another day. So we all decided to shoot each other. Bam. We all killed each other. But when I woke up, I was the only one living. My two friends was my doubt and my frustration. The bank that we robbed was my notebook. And the promise that I shot was the promise God gave me. If you use what I gave you, you won't have to work one day in your life. Wow. <laughs> Man. Deep. So prompts everybody. Just there's no one way to write. Learn how to move out the way and challenge yourself. Deep, man. Mm -hmm. That's deep. <laughs> Yo, we wanna just once again thank Brother Stacy Williams, man, for blessing us. And um here at the Academy of Divine Culture and Urban Expression, this is what we do. We uplift great poets and um we appreciate you for tuning in and we will see you the next time. Blessings. Peace. Bye, y'all.